Hi, and welcome back to this Tuesday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on conservative uh, talk radio. Great to have you in the conversation today. Uh, we followed the trial of the Air Force General Sinclair, or the Army General Sinclair, who uh, pleaded guilty to three cases of adultery, uh, for which the possible prison term is 15 years. Now, apparently he's been, he's not going to go to prison. Uh, he's been reduced, knocked down in rank. He's going to be have to retire. His military career is over. And then he will then retire at a reduced pension as a result. Adultery is still a crime in the United States military. Universal Code of Military Justice, adultery is is a crime. You can go to prison for 15 years for the crime, not just the sin but the crime of adultery. At the very same time, homosexuality, which is a more deviant form of sexual expression, is now honored and celebrated in the United States military. More on that here in just a second. But I'm looking at a piece from the Washington Times. Now, I want to be, I want to be very clear up front here. I have no truck with sexual abuse, none whatsoever. Sexual harassment. I don't even think uh, people ought to make crude and vulgar jokes uh, about women. I'm not for any of that. I'm down with all of that. But the point of this article in Washington Times by Rowan Scarborough is that what's going on right now from the Obama administration is is really what amounts to a political hunt, a witch hunt for males to try to run them out of the military on sexual abuse charges uh, to make examples of these uh, men, here is an excerpt from the column. The push from the commander-in-chief, generals, and politicians to punish sexual offenders, which is fine. I'm, I'm down with that. I, I will be honest with you. I'm absolutely fine with a 15-year incarceration for the crime of adultery. It is a crime. It destroys people's lives. It destroys families. It breaks up civilizations. You want to lock them up for 15 years? I have zero problem with that uh, whatsoever. So I think it's right to punish sexual offenders, but it has become so relentless, according to Ryan Rowan Scarborough, that it endangers the fairness of the military justice system, defense lawyers say. They worry that a cacophony of public statements vouching for accusers and demanding justice can sway military judges and jurors who are trained to take lawful orders. So then, look, punishing military uh, sexual offenders is one thing, but when you have this politically correct juggernaut forcing you in a particular direction, you may wind up punishing somebody that doesn't really deserve it because they want somebody's scalp. you got to bring them a scalp. you got to bring them the head of Alfredo Garcia. So you may go after somebody, exaggerate the charges, overlook exculpatory evidence because you want to get the you want to get the scalp that your superiors are demanding that you bring to them and in this uh, general sinclair court martial a military judge has already already ruled in that case that quote unlawful command influence end quote infected the case of general sinclair in other words what happened is general sinclair was willing to cop a plea he said, look, I will plead guilty to this, that, and that. I did not do this. I did not do that. Some of the more serious charges, I didn't do them. I'm innocent of those. But I am willing to plead guilty to uh, uh, the crime of adultery. And the superior officer injected himself in that case. Doesn't really have a proper place in there. This is for the military tribunals and all that to take care of. He said, no, you will not accept a plea from this guy. We want this guy to pay. We want to make an example out of this guy. Do not accept uh, the plea. And it turned out that his accuser was a female officer, and the prosecutor, he actually quit this case in tears because he was convinced that she was telling a lie, one of the women with whom he'd had an adulterous affair. She accused him not just of consensual sex but of some uh, uh, coerced sexual activity, which is a more serious, obviously, a, a more serious crime. And the prosecutor be, became convinced that she was lying. She was perjuring herself, that those things had not actually happened, but she had manufactured these accusations because she didn't want to go to the brig for 15 years herself. 
So she goes to the, the prosecutor or whatever and says, look, I will rat out the general if you can give me immunity because I don't want to go to the brig for 15 years. So she manufactured this claim of sexual abuse and sexual harassment and coerced sexual activity just to save her own bacon. And the prosecutor figured that out. He says, look, this woman is perjuring herself, and I can't be a part of this. This is a miscarriage of justice. I got no problem punishing this guy for the crimes that he committed, but I am not going to be a party to allowing perjured testimony to, uh, uh, to expose this guy to increased risk. So he quit. His conscience wouldn't let him uh, continue. Greg uh, Rinke, former Army judge advocate, said this, I think it's troublesome when you have the president and the secretary of defense making certain pronouncements about what's to be expected for sexual assault. It's one thing to say it's a serious matter and so forth, but it's another thing to come out and say anyone who is convicted of a sexual assault should get a dishonorable discharge. Each case has to be handled on a case-by-case basis. Uh, John M. Dowd, a defense lawyer, who charged the Marine Corps Commandant with unlawful command influence, said what you've got here in Washington right now is a hanging party, and they want to hang men, male officers, out to dry. Now, I just want to make the observation at this point, uh, and, and I know people will criticize me for this, but I could care less. This is a consequence of putting women into the military in uniform, in close proximity to males in uniform and in the command structure. Uh, if you know anything about human nature, uh, then you know that's just a recipe for trouble. You know, they say that familiarity breeds contempt. Well, familiarity breeds, period. I mean, this is what you are going to get. And that's one of the reasons why the military has been, traditionally, the fighting force has been an all-male military. Because sexual activity, sexual temptation, sexual pull, sexual indiscretions, all of this compromises a morale. It compromises readiness. It uh, compromises preparation. It compromises training. It just shakes everybody up, and that's why it's traditionally been an all-male affair, and I think we'd be better served if our goal is national security. I think we'd be better served uh, to go back to that. We'd have, we wouldn't have these cases, uh, for instance, if we were back to that sort of climate. Uh, Mr. Dowd said this, we seem to be in a climate where folks can pick and choose which part of the criminal justice they like, depending on their particular bias and political correctness. Well, where do they get that? They get that from the commander-in-chief because this is how President Obama approaches the Constitution. This is how he approaches the law. If there's a part of the law he doesn't like, he just ignores it. He won't enforce it. Finds a part of the Constitution he doesn't like, just ignores it, won't enforce it. It does not seem to matter to the political and chattering classes that female officers are free to perjure themselves in sexual harassment cases without Consequence, perjury is a serious crime which subverts the entire system of justice. Now, I frankly think this military, this female officer, doesn't matter what gender she is, she committed perjury. That's a serious crime. And you know, the, the biblical penalty, if you go back to the, the, the ancient uh, criminal code of, of Israel under Moses, the punishment for perjury was you had to suffer the same punishment that you were trying to inflict on whoever you perjured yourself against. In other words, if your testimony would lead to that guy getting thrown into the brig for 15 years and you are convicted of perjuring yourself in that process, then you go to prison. You go to the brig for 15 years. If it's worse, if it's lifetime in prison, which is really what we were looking at here, this guy was looking at going to prison basically for life on these uh, uh, the brig for life, then that's where she would go for perjuring herself. But let her off the hook. No penalty uh, whatsoever. You know, when you look at the military, last year um, the Pentagon found out that there were 26,000 active duty troops, 12,000 women, and 14,000 men who were victims of unwanted sexual contact in 2012. Now stop and think about that just for a second. This is, this is we talked about it at the time, but th this is an alarming statistic when you think about gays in the military, because there were 12,000 females who were victims of unwanted sexual contact in 2012. That's terrible. That's 12,000 too many. No woman should be subjected to un unwanted sexual contact, period. So 12,000 of them, that's 12,000 too many. But there were 14,000 men, 14,000 men, as in males, 
who were victimized by unwanted sexual contact. You know how many of those came from a woman like a superior officer? 2%. So that means 98% of the men who were victims of unwanted sexual contact were being victimized by men, victimized by males. Have you heard anything about that other than on Focal Point and AFR Talk? Absolutely not. But this really is kind of the, um, this is the scandal of the decade in the military that nobody will talk about, nobody wants to talk about, nobody will even admit to here are the numbers in black and white. More men than women are the victims of sexual abuse in the military by other men. And so again, this is a this is a product of open homosexuality in the military. We told you at the time. We said at the time, look, what's going to happen is you're going to this is going to bring sexual tension, a whole new dimension of sexual tension into the military. Is that good for the military? No, because of the effect on unit cohesion, the effect on unit morale, uh, the effect on readiness. Uh, if you've got this kind of sexual tension going on uh, uh, in the same uh, you know, group of soldiers, whether it's a brigade or a platoon or whatever, that's not going to be good for your ability to, to do what you need to do to go uh, to battle. Uh, so again, and, and it's all the things we said. You know, military readiness, recruitment is going to be affected. I mean, the word is going to get out with guys, look, this is not the military you want to go into. It's not the military you don't want to go into. Number one, you are liable to get nailed with a false accusation of sexual harassment. Um, so that's a risk. And you could wind up experiencing unwanted sexual contact from another male. How many, how many young males want to go into a military where they could be at risk for going to the brig for something they didn't even do uh, or at the uh, or on the other hand be exposed to unwanted sexual contact from a fellow male soldier so uh, all in all uh, working out exactly as we had uh, predicted now when we come back I'm gonna uh, explain how President Obama himself is the chief enforcer of the gay Gestapo it has to do with the military be right back, 888-589-8840. 